Hi, I'm Mary Ann Bonetti, and today we are at Kelly Farm in Bonnie Lake, Washington. Now, this is a historic farm with a really neat barn that they have converted into a wedding venue. And what a more romantic spot could I possibly think of to install a Victorian crescent moon garden. Yep, the theme this week is all about romancing the garden. So the garden that we're going to be installing is all white flowers in a crescent moon. Let's go get growing. Well, here I am with some beautiful white flowers. What could be more romantic than a garden that smells great and glows in the moonlight? You know, the Victorians had it right. The Victorians did what we call a crescent-shaped half-moon garden. And we're going to recreate that today here at Kelly Farms in a romantic garden style. Just go to the nursery and choose flowers that, like this sweet alyssum that smells so great, the old-fashioned snapdragons that bloom all summer long, and this is a wonderful phlox. Now, phlox is a perennial that comes back year after year. This is called volcano phlox. But first, I'm going to introduce you to Jamie Burke. Hi, Jamie. Hi. Thanks for helping us out here. Now, Jamie is a soil specialist with Cascade Compost out of Puyallup, Washington, a local soil producer. So Jamie, you're the one that helped us pick out the soil for this garden bed and um, tell us what should you look for when you're picking out topsoil. So when you're looking for a topsoil, you want to make sure that it's rich but okay. also free draining. All right. So you can see that the soil has, we've added cascade compost to it, so it's a really rich draining soil. It's well graded your annuals are going to do beautifully in it. Okay, now here's my question that a lot of people don't understand. Great topsoil, compost, do we still need to fertilize? Absolutely. All right. So the compost is nutrient rich, yeah. but you have to remember it's not a fertilizer. Okay, so what I did is I brought Osmocote, plus this is what I know the professional growers who grew the plants use Osmocote, and we're going to use this because it's so easy to sprinkle in, so let's get to work. All right first thing we did is outline this bed using a garden hose to get the shape right. Then we put down newspaper and then on top of the newspaper, my helpers here are shoving this great topsoil to fill in the whole bed and this is deep enough so that when we go ahead and add our annual plants, uh, they're going to be able to grow right into the topsoil. The lawn below will be killed because it's getting no sunlight because of the newspaper and the soil on top. And what is going to happen is we're going to be using all these plants in a pattern. Um, that's something the Victorians did as well. Bedding out means they did a pattern that repeated itself so that we had a, a gorgeous display of all white blooms. So I'm going to get to work planting with the Osmocote. Now, the Osmocote comes in a shaker bottle so that we can just shake it on top of the soil like this. And then when we add the plants, the plants will have the fertilizer that is slowly released into the soil all around them. Now let me give you a little tip when you plant. When I take these little guys out of these containers here, if they don't come out easy like this, punch them all up, turn the entire thing over, and then they come out quite easily. And especially when we see these root balls like this, I butterfly them, tear them in half just like this. That is going to allow the roots to spread out and really grow. So I'll be putting these in in a lovely little pattern. And with lots of help, we'll have this design planted and ready to go. So now it's been just a couple of weeks and so you can see how the white flowers are starting to fill in and cover the ground. Um, this whole idea of a crescent moon, all white garden, the Victorians were so impressed with romance in the garden that it created a little niche to add two white chairs. And what could be more romantic than that? 